Hi guys, welcome to my channel. If you're new around here, then my name is Kate and I make videos about motherhood, vlogs, family life, interiors, fashion, all of that kind of thing. So if you like the sound of that, I would love for you to stick around, click the subscribe button and become part of our little family over here on my channel. And welcome back all of my lovely regular viewers. Today's video is going to be hacks, tips, tricks and products that I use as a mum to make my life so much easier. So I thought about the 10 things that I do maybe daily, use daily, things that I just have learned over the last nearly 10 years. Can you even believe that? Oh, she's gonna be 10, okay. I'm reaching a little bit, he's 10 next year. Um, but it will be the end of this year that I, 10 years ago I found out I was pregnant with him and I remember announcing it to you guys and letting you know and like that's kind of where my journey of vlogging and following my like life's journey began because before then I only ever did videos where I kind of like talking head videos where I sat and talked to the camera. As soon as you become pregnant you feel like you're already a mum don't you? So for me that's nearly 10 years. Um, it's a long time and I feel like I've learned a lot in that time and yeah these are some things that I've picked up along the way that definitely make my life easier and who doesn't want their life to be easier? So without further ado let's jump into it. So number one is a bit of a tip that I have learned just because of trial and error, buying clothes for three children over the years, I have learnt that sometimes you need to be a little bit smart with your purchases, especially in the first year of their life, when they are changing sizes so quickly. I mean, in the first few weeks, it feels like they get one use out of certain, um, certain items of clothing. But even in that first year, it is generally every three months they go up in a clothing size. So I've definitely been caught out by buying things that I think are gonna fit them and then putting them in them a couple of, week, couple of weeks later and they just don't fit. Um, so I actually like to buy clothes in the next size up. Obviously this does vary baby to baby because some are smaller than their average size for their age and some are bigger. So you can vary it depending on your baby. Also something I've learned over the years is no matter how careful you try to be, when you wash baby clothes, they tend to shrink. I mean, okay, all clothes in our house, let me put my hands up. I try my hardest, they shrink. <laughs> but clothes do tend to shrink a little bit when they've been washed. So again, that just shortens the lifespan that they're gonna have um, and the amount of use you can get out of them. It gets a little bit more tricky when babies start to walk and you get baby grows that are a bit too big and they're not very helpful because they're like flailing around and your child's trying to walk. <laughs> so maybe don't do it then. Um, but definitely before they can walk and they're that mobile, I would just get them bigger clothes. You know, you're indoors most of the time anyway. You can save some nice outfits for best for when you're going out, but that would be one of my first top tips. Um, just get bigger stuff. It will last you so much longer and you'll spend less money. <laughs> my second tip is actually a product that I wanna share with you. We've been using these for months. I think ever since they first came out because I remember seeing the advert for them on TV and I genuinely thought it was a genius idea. So the minute Finley could fit into these, we started using them and I will explain why in a second. They are the Pampers Baby Dry Nappy Pants. They look like this. Um, like I said, we put them on Finley the minute we could because we were experiencing what Pampers are calling Punami lag. <laughs> so these are Punami proof pants and we had tried other brands um, in the first few months of his life and we kept getting leaks, okay? So he would either have a Punami in the night or he would wake up in the night crying and he'd be wet. The nappies that we tried were just not cutting it, so I knew we had to try something different. So like I said, I saw that Pampers had come out with these, and the amazing innovation that these have in them, did you know about this, I'm gonna show you, is the stop and protect pocket. So in the back of the nappy here, there's just a very little flap, a little pocket, which means that when your baby has a punami, which they all inevitably do at some point, it doesn't fly out their back, cover their baby grow, their vest, their bed sheets, literally everything. Um, it goes into this little pocket. It was just genius. So when Pampers asked to work with me, it was just such a natural, like, of course, yes, because we have been customers, we have been buying these, like I said, for months, and completely rate them. Not only that, they have the 12 hour protection, so, we have really good night sleeps now and we don't have punami lag, which is like 
jet lag. <laughs> but for parents, when they're getting woken up in the night by babies that are uncomfortable because their nappy is leaking, um, nobody wants that and nobody wants to have to be changing babies, crying babies and sheets and things, sleeping bags in the middle of the night. Like it's just not fun and it's so disrupting to everyone in the house. So babies find it hard enough to sleep as it is at different times, um, in the, especially in that first year and beyond. But especially in that first year, if you can eliminate one of those problems, like giving them a really comfortable night's sleep where their nappy is basically gonna absorb everything, catch everything, then you're giving yourself one less bit of hassle. And for us, like I said, these have been completely worth it because um, of all of the reasons I just said, plus I'm having to do less washing, so much less washing because I don't wake up in the night with him crying and the bed being dirty. They've been an absolute game changer. He does sleep through a solid 12 hours in the night now and I cannot tell you what a difference that makes to all of us in the house, our overall, especially me and Ricky, our overall well-being and our, just our mood. We're not snapping at each other, we are happier and it just makes you better parents when you get a full night's sleep. I know it's different for all babies, all parents and if you're in the thick of it right now and it's a hard stage, it will get better, I promise. <laughs> Um, but yeah, there are different things you can do. I'm going to talk about another sleep tip that I've got in a minute, but honestly, I promise these have been incredible for us. And if you want to try them for yourself, if you don't believe me, you can actually get a free full value coupon um, in the description box below. So if you just pop there after the video, click on the link, um, you can get sent a coupon and you'll be able to get a pack of the um, Pampers baby dry nappy pants completely for free for you to try out on your baby and see what you think. Oh, another thing I love about Pampers nappy pants before I go on to the next thing, something I've always loved about them, it's a little sticky tab. I'm not gonna ruin it right now because I wanna use the actual nappy, but you just roll them up when it's dirty and you're getting rid of them and you use a little sticker to like seal them up to make a little nappy pile and it's so handy because it stops the nappy just being, you know, you get the picture. <laughs> I have been joined by my lovely Elliot. Hello, sir. Hello. <laughs> he wants to show you something that we use all the time to stick with a bit of a routine. And I actually think kids prefer to have a set routine. I just think it, it is so beneficial to them. <laughs> He's holding it up quite like, nicely now. What is this? It's a chore chart. So I like this one to um, tick it or cross it. If you haven't done it, you should do it. Two, for two minutes and the next one is but do your hair because like everybody wants you to look smart oh yes you have to look smart don't you and so your oh, other um, one you have to um clean your bed if it's tick you have to tick it because i do it every day when i sleep because i don't want to sleep on a blanket so sometimes it gets too hot get, get dressed after you did your making your beds, and then other, and the other one, our children usually clean our toys, clean the new toys up, you are, what's that one? Yeah. Should we have a look? Homework, that's, so you do some of these before school, don't you? Yes. Yeah, and so. some of them after, so if you have any yeah, homework, so. you do it after school. Yeah. As Elliot has just very expertly explained, is their chore charts, they both have, have one. The reason we really like them is because it's just very easy every day to slide it across from, um, not having done the chore to having done it and um, so it's reusable every single day we don't have to tick anything off and like remake a chore chart every few weeks or anything and it also comes with extra ones so you can like stick something over it if, if it's something your kids don't do like say empty the dishwasher or feed the family pet and um, so you can customize it as much as you want yeah, you really like this, don't you? It's a bit it's a bit worse to wear now. It used to have a bit of a plasticky thing on the front, but it shows how much he likes using it. My next tip, obviously when you've sorted out the Punami lag um, <laughs> and you're over that, the last thing you want is to be being woken up in the night by your baby for other reasons, or for them to not be able to settle themselves back down to sleep. Um, we've had this problem with 
well, all of them, but Finley, obviously I'm talking about because he's my newest baby, so he's like the freshest in my mind as a baby. Um, he's sleeping really well now, but there have been times over the last year where he's come kind of up and down and he's been more, um, kind of he's needed someone in the room with him as he goes to sleep. So it's not always easy and it can get to a point where they stay up for ages and they're just used to you being there you cry when they leave the room and stuff like that so we've tried lots of different methods i've tried to do cry it out with all of them but i've never been able to do it for long enough um, because i just don't like leaving them crying for that long it's never really seemed to work for us so something that i personally have liked to do and that works for us so i thought i'd share it with you is the kind of like gradual gradually leaving the room technique so if for example at the moment you have to hold your baby's hand through the cot to get them to sleep I'm talking about more when they're in their own room as opposed to that sort of first six months it's, that's a bit more tricky. Once they're in their room, if you have to like hold their hand, pat their back, sing them songs and they need you to settle them instead of self-soothing, um, what I try to do is gradually get myself out of the room. Every nap and bedtime, I slowly move further away. So I'll start off by maybe singing him one song instead of singing him like 10 songs for two hours, which I've done in the past. Um, and uh, so I'll sing him one song, maybe pat his back for five minutes. But then I'll sort of turn around so I'm not giving him too much interaction and he can settle himself down but I'm still in the room. And that seems to work and then the next time I get a little bit further out of the room to the point where we can get to, like me or my husband, just sitting in his door with our back towards him, facing out the door. Sometimes I'm even known to like be working in the hallway so I can get stuff done. He doesn't know or he can't see any of that. He can just see that my back is still there. And when I feel like he's settling down quite quickly with this, then I'll try and not be in there at all. And I find that that does really work. It's a gradual process. You could probably do it over a week or maybe more depending on how upset they get. Um, they do get used to it really, really quickly. And another quick sleep um, getting them to sleep technique I've had. Obviously when you're again right in the thick of it, maybe they're teething or maybe they're not feeling too well and they are waking up in the night for reasons like that you can't control in other ways. Um, I have been known to get a pillow and a duvet, as probably all of us have, and slept on their floors. <clears throat> but obviously it's not good for the old back. So what I sometimes do, <laughs> tell me if anyone else has already done this, I'll, once he's gone off to sleep, if he keeps waking up, I'll put the pillow on the floor and then bunch the duvet or the cover or my cover up as though I'm asleep under it. Um, so it looks like I'm there. So when he turns around and he's all sleeping, it's quite dark, he'll think I'm still there, but I've actually gone back to bed. Try it, let me know if it works for you because it has worked for me many times. So the next thing I love Obviously we all love being organized, easier said than done, but one thing that we can often forget to organize, it becomes such a mess, especially with kids, is the car. Um, one place that I find is a really good place for added storage, which really doesn't take up much room, but it's so handy, is to have um, a boot caddy, so like a back of the seat storage organizer. It just clips onto the headrests on the backs of the seats. Um, and we fill this up with things that we might need either like in, not an emergency, but you know, when you're out and about and you've maybe forgotten something, as again, we've all done as parents. Um, so I put things in there like nappies and wipes. Um, we've got a first aid kit. This one is incredible. It might be a bit OTT. You don't necessarily need something this extensive. Um, I just got this one off Amazon because it was very highly um, rated. I, I put other things in there like a spare change of clothes, blankets, um, maybe like a few toys in there as well. Just if you get caught out, you know, there's been plenty of times where I've gone out and I haven't packed his nappies, I haven't packed his wipes, I haven't packed a spare outfit and you're like, oh my goodness, I feel like the worst mama, what am I gonna do? But if it's in the boot, you can just chuck it into their baby bag and you're like, I knew I did that for a reason. <laughs> So our youngest is at the age where he just wants to get into every single cupboard and get everything out. So we have been looking into the child safety locks and which ones are the best ones. And I wanted to show you ones that we really, really love. So these are the Acorn Magnetic Safety Locks. They work on in-frame kitchen cupboards like ours and also just regular kitchen cupboards. So they're really, really clever because all you need is this little magnet to open your cupboards, um, which we find really handy because 
when we have the kind of more traditional cupboard locks, if we want to keep anything locked that we don't want the older boys to get into, they can really easily just put their hand in and open it like us, which is good for cupboards that they need access to. But if there's any that we really want no one to get into, for example, like the under the sink cupboard, these are fantastic. Let me show you how they work. So on our under sink cupboard we do actually have a little latch but it's more for show than anything, it's not that safe they can still get into it. So even with the latch, when I open it, they're not getting in there. But when we pop this on, if by magic, ta -da, it opens. So the installation of these is really easy as well. They come with a sticky pad on the back of all of these. You get about 10 of these latches in a pack and then just stick them on inside your cupboards and you're pretty much ready to go. Hello, you've joined me in the kitchen for a little kitchen hack. Um, this isn't rocket science, but pizza cutters, don't underestimate them and don't just pull them out of the cutlery drawer just when you have a pizza. Um, I actually use this to cut so many things up from cutting up bread. I find it easier than using a knife. Um, it's really good if you've made tray bakes, sorry if you can hear the dog, tray bakes like flapjacks or anything where you just need to cut things into squares, even if you've made like brownies or something. This is so, so handy to have. It's also really handy sometimes to chop up like herbs and even some salads and stuff. Another thing I like to cut up with this is quesadillas because you can cut them into like little pizza wedges and it's kind of a little bit safer for the kids to use as well. So if they're helping out in the kitchen, they really enjoy cutting things up with the pizza slice. It's a little bit of a novelty for them and a little bit more fun. So I thought I would include this little hack because I find it really, really helpful in the kitchen. So we can often as parents feel quite guilty about our kids having screen time, but in a modern world, it's just kind of unavoidable. Obviously, my children do watch things that aren't educational, um, but I try and get them to play games and watch things that are educational as well, and it, it can be hard to get that balance between them having fun and learning, but there are a few things that I really, really love. Um, one is called Miss Rachel. This is for babies, and probably babies and toddlers. Um, it's something that we recently discovered for Finley. She's a YouTuber, she's absolutely amazing. Um, you can watch these videos that help them with their gestures from a really young age, so she teaches them to sort of wave and um, nod, shake their head, just really simple gestures like that. And also they're talking, saying mama, little songs to sing mama, dada, all of the simple first words. Obviously as parents, these are things that we're doing all of the time. Uh, I'm constantly asking Finley to try and say this, try and say that, wave, do all of the little things that you do. But the way she does it, her tone of voice, her um, little songs that she does is really engaging to babies. It's the only thing he's really sort of watched for more than five minutes and after a few times of watching it honestly he started nodding and saying yes which he wasn't saying before even though I was always asking him to so I love Miss Rachel I think it's a really really good bit of screen time when you need to get something done or whilst they're maybe having lunch or something they can watch and it's it really teaches them a lot and for older kids like Elliot sort of age so he's five six it's and up any, he I loves this app called Lingo Kids, he's playing on it right now, and again, it's an educational app. They do spelling, they do maths, there's actually so much oh, on there. Um, but he loves it like any chance he can get, he will be on Lingo Kids. So, I'm going to show you what that's like really quickly now. So, it, what do you have to it, do on this? You like have to like swipe it to jump, yeah, and like you have to like miss the gaps. And what do you have to collect? You have to collect like whatever they show you, like the mouse. So you have to collect a mouse yeah. to spell out the word. No, no, yes. So it's nearly Finley's bedtime now. Excuse the lighting, it's not the best in here. But I realized I just had to quickly, that is a toy in his room. I had to quickly run in here and show you this next item because I can't show you when I film some of this video later on this evening because he needs it to go to sleep. So that's how much we use it. We use it every single day. This is his white noise machine. I have spoken about white noise for years, ever since we had our first baby and discovered that it really, really helped him to sleep. Not all babies like white noise, but a lot of them do. With Finley, our youngest child, we've probably used it more than any of them altogether. One of the reasons is because 
it's not great for babies to be in really, really quiet environments. I feel like when you first have a baby, we did especially, we made it so that we kind of tiptoed around him. Everything had to be quiet because he was sleeping. But actually, now that we've got two older children, we've got two dogs, we've just had a huge house renovation. There is no way we can put our baby down for a nap or to bed at night and it be quiet. It's just not. So this kind of means that there's noise in the room, but if there's any sudden loud noises like the door goes and the dog barks or the one of the boys shouts or screams or something, this kind of just blocks all of that out and there's just one continuous noise. So I think that's really good because it helps with the rest of our family life not having to tell our older two to just like shh, be quiet all the time because it's not really very fair. Um, this little gadget has been brilliant because it's portable, you can charge it and you can use it on the go, you can hang it from their pram and stuff. Um, but also you can plug it in so it can run all night long and that's pretty much what we've done since he was born and he sleeps with it on every night. This one also has different sounds that you can get on, on it. It's very, it can be very loud, it sounds like an aeroplane but the good thing about it is you can turn it right down. Um, it lights up so this is really handy if you've got a baby like us that when he's not sleeping that well kind of keeps chucking his dummy out of the car if you're in a dark room you can use it as a little torch to find the dummy um, there's also like a mode on it where it flashes kind of on and off slowly we don't really use it but you know it... <laughs> even if you wanted your little one to have a little night light in their room it can just be a continuous glow it's not super bright but it just adds a nice glow to the room oh and it's got a timer as well so if you don't want it to run all night you can put it on for half an hour an hour or an hour and a half um which is another handy little feature they thought of everything i would say if you've got a new baby and you want to check out if your baby likes white noise before you know investing in something like this before buying something um you can find free white noise videos on YouTube which run for like eight hours or on apps you can get white noise apps on your phone but obviously it's not always practical for your baby to have your phone when they're napping you probably need your phone like for example I work a lot on my phone so that's a very crucial time for me to be using it um, so yeah this just means that you don't have to use your phone but it's a really good way of testing out whether they like the white noise and if it helps them to go to sleep some young babies go to sleep like that with white noise it's like magic especially when they're really young so definitely try it out if you haven't already and you're struggling to get some sleep so my next hack is one that helps the kids to tidy their rooms and to make it fun so along the lines of elliot's chore chart he showed you one of their jobs around the house is to keep their rooms tidy obviously that doesn't always happen as you can see so i like to remind them how to do it by making it into a fun game so this is what i like to do are you ready for a tidy up speed mission yes okay so i'm gonna set you challenges around the room and i'm gonna see on my stopwatch how quickly you can do them okay <laughs> are you ready okay elliot your next challenge is how fast can you make your bed ready go Oh my god, look! One minute to make your bed! Just one minute you did that in! Excellent job! Next challenge, any bits of rubbish around the room need to go in the rubbish bin. Go! Right, I think the last mission is Put any toys that you can see on the floor or where, where they're not supposed to be away. Ready, steady, go. You did all of that in less than five minutes. I'd say like three minutes, high five. Super speedy. 
So there you go, those are some of my favourite hacks, tips, tricks and products that I love that make my life as a mum so much easier. But I'd love to hear what your favourite ones are, so please leave them in the comments below. It will help me out, it will help other mums and dads out that are watching this as well. We can all help each other out as a little community. Um, it takes a village. <laughs> thank you so much for watching and again thank you so much to Pampers for working with me. Um, don't forget to go and try those nappies, like I said you can get that coupon for a free pack to try them out for yourselves I'll link that in the description box below for you thanks again for watching everyone make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already and I'll be back with another video very soon bye guys